people ask me all the time how I like the Ram so far. My answer is that I love it, but there has been one thing that's been a headache. Hello everybody, welcome back. So as you can tell by the intro, I finally was able to do the one modification that fixed a problem that I've been having with the Ram for a very long time. So throughout the course of the build, I did have a lot of weight to add it to the rear of the truck. I'd say it's a little bit over 500 pounds, which includes the deck drawer system, the lightner rack, the rooftop tent. Uh, I switched out the bumpers, as well as um, adding that bigger tire as a spare tire. Uh, to negate that, I did remove the factory spare that was underneath the truck bed, as well as remove the original bumper. So basically with all that weight added to the back and with the cold swing suspension, I did get about a couple of inches of sagging in the rear, uh, which was pretty noticeable. I'd say when I did measure the spacing between the tire, top of the tire and the bottom of the wheel well fender, it was a couple of inches smaller or lower on the rear compared to the front. So I did install the Falcon Terraflex leveling kit, which did give a little bit of lift in the front and it was supposed to give a little bit in the back, but it was still sagging in the rear. So I tried a couple of things. First, I got dual rate coils from Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Unfortunately, the thing is they don't list any information as far as what the, the weight load is for those springs, for those coil springs. And I suspect it wasn't that high because I still had the sagging. Another thing I did to accompany the sagging to try to hopefully prop it up a little bit was to get thicker bump stops from Timbrin. Compared to the factory, these are a couple of inches thicker. Basically, one that I'm happening was the truck bill was actually resting on the axles. Now, unfortunately, it did kind of help a little bit with the sag. It did give it a little bit of elevation, but it was still lower, noticeably lower in the rear compared to the front. And the other thing is the downside to that was the fact that since it was resting uh, on the axles, every time I hit a bump, the pushback onto the bed was greater. So there was a lot more shaking and tossing around on the bed. Of course, the bump stops did absorb a little bit of the impact, but it's not as good as a good coil spring. So as you saw in the intro, my friend Ian from Mule Expedition Outfitters suggested and recommended that I try the Dobinson's HD coil springs for the rear of the Ram. They do make coils, a heavy duty coil for the Ram, which is supposed to carry an additional weight load of 350 to 550 pounds. And it seemed like a good idea because the amount of additional load and weight I have in the truck bed was similar to the weight rating for those Dobinson coils. So I did decide to pull the trigger and purchase those coils from Mule Expedition Outfitters. So I am on pretty level land right here. So let's measure out the space in between the top of the tire and the bottom of the fender and see how close we are to leveling out both sides. For the rear, we're looking at slightly under six inches or just about six inches. So as you can see, there's a slight difference of maybe about a quarter of an inch uh, between the rear and the front. The rear being slightly lower, which was way better than what I had before, which is a couple of inches lower than the front. For right now, since I just got it installed, I am going to test it out and see if it does settle over time but I suspect it won't, but I will keep you posted on that. And obviously you guys will notice it over time as well. The other thing is when I did drive it for the past couple of days, I did notice a much smoother ride because the bump stops were not resting on that axle. So then now that that's done and out of the way, while I'm out here in this uh, beautiful weather, I think I'm gonna make some coffee and share maybe a few other updates with you guys.
Nothing beats a hot cup of coffee on a snowy day like this. So rig build updates. Actually for Shadow and for Dusty, I am thinking about going into a dual battery power setup. While there's pros and cons to both portable uh, battery packs as well as onboard battery power, I am thinking about it and I definitely wanna bring you guys along on that journey to get it done for both rigs. As for Dusty, there's gonna be a whole bunch of things coming up that I'm gonna do as far as uh, changing out the tires, lift, suspension, underbody protection, all that stuff, because I, that is going to be more like a Rocklander build. So uh, more on that to come very soon. Also, you might be wondering why I am carrying the Jackery in the bed like this. And as you can see, it's covered with snow. And I've gotten a lot of people asking me questions like, you know, how does it do in the snow and in the rain and things like that? And that is exactly why I am carrying it in the back. Although there is some shelter from adverse weather with the rooftop tent, as you can see, it does still get snow or some rain depending on how the wind blows um, onto the device. Now what I'm doing is I'm basically torture testing it. I want to be able to see what the threshold is for this battery pack so that I can relay that information to you guys so you can make better educated decisions when you're buying these things. So far I have had the Jackery in rainy weather provided it was still protected by the rooftop tent as well as some snow and it it's still running and it's still working fine. I'm gonna do continued use and I will report back to you guys on that. Also, I have gotten a lot of questions about the rooftop tent and the 270 awning. When I do go out in uh, weather like this, whether it's uh, snowing or raining, how I'm able to dry it. In the video after this, most likely what we'll do is we're gonna go out into some adverse weather and the tent and the awning might get wet and soaked and I will show you in next week's video how I do dry it out, but for the most part, just telling you right up front, uh, I utilize my garage space to dry it out. And like I said, I'll show you that probably in next week's video of what I do. So as far as suspension components go, I think I'm gonna just leave it the way it is now, continue to test it out to see how I feel. Of course, on pavement roads, the change is noticeable. Of course, in the smallest bumps, when I did go in the freeway with the, previously with the bump stops resting on the axle, it would definitely, uh, toss up the bed side to side up and down but right now when I do this same kind of roads it's more smoother and the impact is absorbed by the shocks or the coils so it's much noticeably better oh yeah another thing a lot of people did recommend and did bring up airbags now me personally I thought about doing the airbags there are different kinds of airbag air suspension kits out there there was even the ones where you can put stuff the bag in the coil and adjust it with air pressure uh, for me that the type of maintenance required to do something like that and the kind of work involved didn't appeal to me at all. As well as just the air suspension kits out there. Uh, from what I understand in terms of maintenance and the cost, um, it was much too great compared to the coil replacement. So the HD coil was about $250 plus the labor of getting it installed. Compare that to a whole air suspension kit, which can run towards a few thousand dollars, depending on the type of suspension kit. It is definitely a night and day difference in terms of how much you can spend out of your wallet. But, you know, over time, we'll see how the coil holds up. If it turns out that it does not hold up well and it ends up being, I see the sag again, then of course I will have to entertain other options as well. But with that said, thank you for joining me on this video. The next video should be another adventure. Stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to subscribe. Also, if you like the video, hit that like button. It helps out the channel a lot. So with that said, be safe, take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I also did cut off the tips on shadow. As you can see, it is now over there. 
and I didn't want to cut it past the exhaust hanger so we did that on both sides right there and the reason I did that is because one the, the muffler tip on the passenger side of shadow did land on a rock so it got badly bent and it's bent out of shape and then on the driver's side there was actually the muffler was miss it, it got pushed up into the side over here even before then both of the mufflers would actually make contact with the bumper and it would make vibrating noises so i just figured that'd be easier to do and just kind of give it a little bit more room over here on the bumper a little bit all right anyways take care everyone Thank you.